Well, hello, everybody. Um, uh, we're, we're coming towards the end of day two here, and we've got an exciting session. Uh, thanks for joining us uh, again, and or if you're uh, just logging off of first time, thanks for coming in. I do want to introduce um, Cindy Stanton and Chris Ramos, and I'll give them a moment to say hello shortly. But my name is Christopher Hertz. I'll be the moderator today. Uh, Cindy, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Sure. Thanks, Chris. Um, I'm as everyone said, I'm Cindy Stanton. I uh, lead our vulnerability risk management practice at Rapid7. So I'm responsible for our products um, that deliver VM capabilities, AppSec capabilities, and offensive security. Um, I've been here a little, a little over a year. I've been in security for a really long time. So when we're talking about what it's been like and where it's going, I, I've had a, a good glimpse on, on that trajectory. And so really looking forward to chatting with Chris and Chris today about um, this topic. Thank you, Cindy. And Chris, would you like to say hello? Absolutely. Hello, everyone. My name is Chris Doremus. Uh, I'm the VP of Technology here at the Cloud Security Practice at Rapid7. Uh, you know, general day to day, I'm responsible for working with our product support and engineering teams here at uh, Divi Cloud to drive innovation in the cloud security posture management space. Uh, but also, as part of you know, working with Rapid7 in a broader initiative, really working cross practice to help uh, bring together the product portfolio and build a holistic view of governance, risk, and compliance for all of Rapid7 customers. So really excited to talk about this, this topic today and looking forward to answering some of the questions from the audience. Wonderful. And so to start off, what Cindy and Chris will be vigorously discussing, or, or, or you know, it will be overcoming challenges of vulnerability management at scale in dynamic, ephemeral cloud environments. It's a mouthful, but it's going to be really exciting. Uh, <laughs> as we go through the next 30 minutes or so, uh, there is a Q&A um, option in the uh, in the browser window. So if you're looking in your browser, there's a general chat function as well as Q&A. Uh, you may already be familiar with this. Please go ahead and just ask questions in the Q&A section. We will have time at the end of this session uh, for those for us to surface those Q&A questions directly to Cindy and Chris. So just feel free to drop them in over the next 20 minutes or so, and we will we will collect those at the end and answer them. Um, and without further ado, Cindy, I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, I heard I, I found a quote where you said we recognize that the nature of application security is evolving. Um, tell us about that. What, what did you mean? Yeah. And, and, yeah, absolutely. So when we talk to our customers, we hear all about, you know, how much energy and how much investment is going into applications overall, right? This drive to digital applications have sort of been at the center of it and fueling, you know, kind of fueling that and, and making sure that customers are making that progress is you know, agile development processes, and then the leveraging of cloud infrastructure, um, open source frameworks for, for applications and, and containers. And everything. It's all about speed and it's all about pace. And I think for the app, for application, as application security um, people, stewards of application security, whether you're in a security team or sitting in a cloud security team, this means that, you know, we need to be thinking differently about how we go about securing those applications. I think the role of the, uh, there's a real appreciation for the fact that the role of the application in the overall attack surface and, and the, the place that it, it may be more porous than some other parts of the stack um, is very much understood. And so we hear, we hear our customers kind of saying, look, we want to understand the full stack from applications, you know, from building up from the cloud infrastructure through the hosts that are involved or you know, whatever, whatever other mechanism that they're using to the application, we want to have that full visibility of application security at that at that full stack kind of perspective. And we want to make sure that security is um, part of the process, that it's not kind of bolted on or something awkward that's slowing down this pipeline that we've all been working on to get to the place where we can have that acceleration of, of application development. So we hear about, you know, Everything in the news is like shift left, shift left, and we certainly, we certainly believe, you know, we certainly believe that we've seen our security, our secure appsec security teams understanding the need to be more cognizant of developers and their tool sets and building into that, um, into that, into whether it's a CI, CI, CD pipeline or, or just kind of getting earlier into the um, security uh, lifecycle. But we also hear, you know, the need to make sure that these applications, particularly critical applications are running and are secure in production. So we kind of have seen this, this, you know, desire to have to let's build this into the process, but let's also make sure we have controls, you know, as we go into production. And 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 really the understanding that there's this need to bridge between security and developers that's greater than ever before. 
Oh, so let's talk a little bit about that. So we're, we're in now a cloud world, and Chris, I'll give you a chance to talk in a second. We're, 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 um, we're, we're, in, we're in the cloud world. For us, we're talking about cloud, not SaaS, but more IaaS, PaaS, yeah. Yeah. Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Platform, Microsoft Azure, Alibaba Cloud, Oracle, IBM, right? the whole, all the hyperscale cloud providers. And, um, and so th the world has changed a little bit relative to vulnerability management. And so I'd love to have you and Chris comment What's what's the same? You know, so we are in this new different world that is at hyperscale where there's more developers now involved in in cloud, where you maybe have a ton more activity, right? But but I imagine some things have stayed the same. What can you walk us through a little bit of, of what stayed the same despite the move to, to cloud? I mean, I think the core tenets of what you have to do are the same, right? You need you know, you need to be in a place where you're able to have visibility of what you've got, which is a lot, actually a lot easier in the cloud, right? But like you need that visibility and then you need the understanding of your attack surface and the risks that you have within that, the, that attack surface. So conceptually, I think it's not like there's this miracle, like you don't have to worry about those things anymore. Like all of those concepts are still something that are important. Um, and so I, I think that's, from my perspective, there's a lot of like conceptually things that you have to do that are the same, but the how is, what which we're going to talk about is, is quite different. So yeah, Chris, what about you? What what, what do you see as the same? Yeah, I mean, look, I think that um, you know, from a patching, monitoring, remediation, notification perspective, you're still responsible for setting that up. You're still responsible for your authentication, authorization, accounting to all of you know the assets and you know who who has access to them. Um, you know, I, I I think I think visibility is is the same, and in some areas, I actually like like some of your response there. It's uh. In some areas, it is it is easier, but depending on how your enterprise deploys cloud, and if you're fragmented yeah. across multiple cloud providers, it can add some overall complexity yeah. to it. We'll certainly talk about that soon. But um, I think that you know vulnerabilities and uh, having to educate and bring a, a, a wider audience uh, is absolutely the same. And in in some cases, you have to amplify that, and we'll absolutely talk about that in a moment too. That you know you need to bring that that education component. To the forefront of your of your um, strategy here, because more people are going to be working in, inside of cloud than you've ever seen in a you know data you know data center world, uh, and that's going to really you know uh, amplify the the complexity. So we'll certainly talk about that. I think on the next slide, in terms of you know how do you think about what's different, um, and I got off right with what I said, and that's the you know the heterogeneous world that we see. Right? I mean, now we we see eighty percent of our customers today have at least two clouds and many of them have three or four. And so I think you know, right off right off the bat, what's kind of different is you've got application in a, in a workloads that you have to secure in different ways across Azure, across AWS. And so when you think about, you know, patching, remediation, when you think about detection, you have to think about this with an Azure lens and Amazon lens and then a Google lens. And it's interesting, we talked to a lot of our customers and they start off in one cloud and they swear we're gonna be Amazon forever. Mm -hmm. And then their business is super successful. Their product is super successful. They go acquire a new a new company, and that company runs inside of Azure or runs inside of Google. And that could be a strategic decision. Um, it could just be a technology decision. But if you acquire that company, the, the you know the first thing you do is not going to tell them to shut everything down and move to your cloud of choice. You're going to really want to empower them to continue to innovate and to continue to accelerate in their in their cloud. So through no choice of your own, you may just inherit. You know Azure and um, AWS or Azure and Google, and so I think it's important to think about um, you know your security posture and the uh, landscape of it is going to exponentially grow as as you um, continue to innovate within within the cloud today. Um, I also think it's you know the number of people that are working in in cloud. I mean more and more, especially now almost the post COVID world, we're all remote. We're all getting access to cloud cloud technologies. We're all we're all chartered with innovating and getting workloads deployed at like you know breakneck speed that's the that's the beauty of cloud is we, we can do things at a, at a velocity we could not do before and with this you have a lot of people deploying on the cloud who aren't familiar you know they they certainly weren't familiar with security before the advent of cloud and now with the advent of cloud they're definitely not familiar and the cost of a misconfiguration the cost of a vulnerability can really impact your your you know company's perception to the, to the public it can impact shareholder value. It, it can be very, very detrimental. So, that that for me, I think, are the are, are the two main things. And it really is important to talk about the education. We'll certainly go into it more. But 
you need to make sure that you're training up all, all your you know, staff on how to do cloud correctly. That's great. And Cindy, what, what Chris missed there? You know, let's let's make sure we, we fill in the gaps. You know, I, I think there there is, you know, there is a level of, of you know, secu- you know, we all have heard about the uh, the responsibility model, right? Like shared responsibility model. There is a level of, of kind of security you get built in to Chris's point, but then you're navigating, how does that get expressed in all of those different clouds? And again, kind of bring it back together. So, so there are some things that are, that are fundamentally kind of difficult sometimes in a, in a traditional world that are, are somewhat easier here, but this complexity of how you then bring it together across multiple clouds, across multiple accounts even, right? Like bringing that all together is where we kind of get to that point. So, so I agree with Chris. I think, um, we also hear from customers the thing that's different is like who has responsibility sometimes, right? For these for for vulnerability management um, in the cloud. And so, you know, I work a lot with uh, kind of traditional security teams, and then we've got um, and then you've got cloud security teams, right? Who have responsibility specifically for cloud. And like, how do those two how do those two teams interact? You know, if the security team is responsible for you know, ensuring there are certain controls, ensuring, you know, being the place where a lot of audit is kind of coming out from a compliance perspective, like how are they interacting and that sort of thing. It's another thing that I think has added complexity um, is for all the right reasons, right? Like wanting to go fast, wanting to make sure, make sure that these hybrid environments are, are both sides are, are kind of secured, but it, it does add that complexity. Um, but I, I think Chris's point about more more people in a place to be spinning things up and getting production workloads into you know out is something that is really the is really the thing that we find our, our customers really trying to stay in stay in front of and having that awareness of what what they need so they need the help they need the help of of a security team that's telling them look this is how it has to be done and here and and, and a way to validate that it is being done that way is I think even more important than you would see in a traditional world where there's so many like checks and gates on the, on the way out the door. So let's dive into that. I think you know, there's, you've just talked very eloquently about the fact that sort of impact on two sort of very discrete things, teams and then the process and finishes them. So as we think about the movement of having to now do vulnerability management in a cloud world, what, is, what, what do we see the impact on teams being? How are teams being Reorganized, retrained, refactored, right? What and then and then what? What are what are the process changes that are being driven by that same paradigm shift? Yeah. So I mean, I think first you see this DevSecOps mentality. I mean, you know, developers and engineers are getting more involved with the security of their workloads more so than ever before. Um, I think that they're being really chartered with. I mean, not to beat a you know. That, that horse here was shifting left, like everyone has to do it. You have to start to attack this in your in your CSE pipeline. Um, and, and, and so you're seeing a lot more embracement of CloudFormation templates, Terraform, Azure ARM templates, like that is the preferred model to deploy the cloud, not going to the console and clicking the little buttons to kind of do things <laughs> in like an ad hoc fashion. And so, you know, it's interesting. We, we like look at, you know, within Rapid7, some of the like marketing teams are doing Terraform templates. Like you're actually seeing people who are traditionally not even engineers they're learning how to do cloud cloud deployment in more of a templated language approach, which is just better for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we see, um, you know, we see, it, depending on how companies kind of approach this problem, we see security teams having to get really educated, right? Like having having to be, having to extend their skill set to understand how they work with that environment because it's a different model, right? And so, um, I, you know, I was talking to a CISO this morning who was saying, you know, if I try to do that, if, if I come with the same processes and I come with the same mindset in my team, we're going to fail at this right, right out of the gate. And so it's really about, I, I echo Chris, it's like about how, how do they think about these core kind of principles of security with the how being really, the how with that process being really different. And then there is the reality of, you know, there's multi there's multi cloud, but there's also hybrid cloud, right? And so, how do we make you know how do you make sure that you're keeping a consistent um, level of security as as that that complexity even magnifies even further, which you yeah. talked about in the, in the yeah, process. Spot on, and I mean from from a process perspective, I mean we're seeing our customers forming that cloud center of excellence. We're seeing them you know really try to ramp up and you know bridge that kind of edge, 
education gap and, and the security achievement gap. We talk about it a lot here here at Rapid Seven. Um, you know, you need to help in large organizations. You know, you need to bring these different business units aligning on how to do cloud security across the enterprise in a consistent way, and you're not doing it differently in one in, in one business you know unit versus another. You know, also I think that the visibility becomes key, and you're seeing both commercial solutions as well as cloud cloud native solutions try to help with that visibility. There are more services than ever before. There is no live reInvent this year, but I think we'll see 20 new Amazon or 30 new Amazon services come out this year, and you'll see developers anxious to get into those and play with those. If you don't have visibility into those services, if you don't understand those services, those are new attack vectors that you now are, are, are potentially vulnerable to. And I think that like playing off the what's changed, the concept of a, of a, a vulnerability has matured. Absolutely. Very, very much changed. And now you have to think about not just your compute instances, and you know, your firewalls and oh, it looks like it looks like Chris may have dropped out there for a second. Yeah, no, I, I can't I can't echo that enough. That the, what is a vulnerability has definitely changed. The 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 you know I think what we've been thinking about in terms of hey, a there's a vulnerability on a host and I patch it. You know, vulnerabilities can be things around the configuration of all these services, as Chris was saying, which. Again, super hard to stay on top of um, within an within an individual organization, um, and super hard super hard for the security teams to stay on top of. But somehow our developers are constantly like ready to take on the next one, right? So, um, indeed. Well, with that, let me let me ask you, Cindy, Chris. A lot of times, what I hear coming from the community is, "What do I want to look for in this new world as we advance over the next you know uh, couple of years?" What what should I be looking for from a technology partner when it comes to things like vulnerability management? What are some of the core pillars that you think are the most important elements of a vulnerability management strategy today? Um, I, I think we believe that if you know you need to have a cloud native solution to be able to go after to be able to you know handle this sort of the ephemeral nature, the speed, the volumes that we're dealing with. Um, you know, it's just it's hard to think of how. You know, it's like you keep thinking about like, how would I do this another way? I mean, it really that cloud native component, I think, is something that we, we firmly believe you should be looking for. Um, we I also think that we all know this journey to the cloud. It feels it feels really fast. But the reality is this hybrid world that we live in will, you know, continues and will continue. And so making sure that you have a solution that can take you through that journey, that can help you be consistent across um, you know, across both cloud and, and on-prem um, workloads as you're as you move. Um, I, I think we found, you know, this is helps customers be more successful than just kind of you know getting more complexity with tools to hit kind of each different type of workload. Um, Chris, do you want to? Yeah, that? absolutely. Love, love this point. So hopefully, I don't I don't cut out. I think I think my daughter's watching Netflix or something. <laughs> about that. But um, you know, I think for for me, it starts with you know flexibility. I think that. Every single company is going to have their own unique way of, of leveraging all these cloud services and, and, and technologies. And you cannot force a prescriptive, you know, single definition of good across, you know, all of all of your customers. And so, you know, we see a, a, a lot of our customers, whether they're highly regulated, whether they're in, you know, inter, entertainment. We, we we have like some of the most uh, like amazing, mature cloud consumers, and they've been in cloud for just a long time. And so they are using these these cloud services in very unique ways so it, it, it all starts with flexibility and you know, that that partner should be able to effectively work with you to define a cloud security and vulnerable and vulnerability management posture that aligns with how you want to leverage these these cloud services and then i think the real time component here jumps off of this slide for me and that you know you know you you cannot wait hours to see these problems manifest. You know, it, it, it really only only takes a few minutes of an access key being exposed on a GitHub repo or an S3 bucket being open to the world. And you've got lots of open source tools out there that, you know, can find these, these holes quickly and get your data down. So being able to ingest a lot of these signals quickly and then help reduce the signal to noise to noise ratio. I mean, a lot of our customers, they talk about having billions of change events a month. You know, how do you know which of those those change events are are the ones which put you in, in you know bodily harm? So combining that kind of real time with the ability to 
kind of cut through the noise and focus on the signals that you and your team should really go go focus on. And then lastly, I think it's really the context. You think about the full stack, you know, you think about the application, not all apps are the same in terms of the overall risk profile. And a, you know, a sandbox account that a developer spun up that has a vulnerability in it, yes, that's bad. But, you know, it's different if it's spun up in an account, whether it's staging or production that has backdoor access to, you know, with a cross account role or with a, you know, VPC peer, you have to take the full stack and the infrastructure that backs the stack into context when you kind of weigh, where do I have to go attack and, you know, clean up first? Absolutely. Well, um, that, you yep. know, and we've talked a lot about pace. I, I think, auto, you know, this, you cannot be surviving in this world without some level of automation. And you need a partner who understands what it takes to do automation and do it well. I think there's a lot of talk about automation and, and sort of promises. It's, it's about a partner that can help you like think practically about automation and how you get it in place and get it to work and grow versus kind of promising the world and, and delivering a lot of headaches. So I think that's, it's hard to imagine how you survive without automation with the pace we're talking about, but you've got to be, you've got to have a partner that understands how that rolls out, how you do that, how you build that in a way that's consumable by your team. Like there's a lot, there's a lot there um, in terms of, you know, we're in a place where there's a lot of promise and you really need to make sure you're finding a partner that, that understands how to get you to impact and success with them, that kind of capability. That's a great cadence to what does the future look like? It's a big question, uh, but let's let's focus it down on on vulnerability management. Yeah, you know, <laughs> if you had to if you had to think about what the future of vulnerability management looks like, Cindy, given all the things that are happening in the world, um, what what do you predict? You know, uh, give us a little give us a little viewpoint of that, and then we'll shift over to Q and A. So, folks who I know there's a few questions that come in, we'll, we'll get to those, but. Please start to populate um, any questions you have for Cindy or Chris, and, and we'll get to them in just a couple minutes here. Cindy, take it away. Yeah, well, I think you know traditional vulnerability management has been very focused on the host and the you know the vulnerabilities within the host, and I think we see a world where you know it's not it's not like it's really far out and tomorrow, but I, I think it's happening now where you know containers and serverless are going to be you know play a much bigger role in in the in the um, the way that applications are being built, and I think you know. A VM as a VM as a as a person thinking about VM, you got to kind of do, pull away from the ho like the traditional kind of host view and think about how you're going to secure um, serverless and, and and containers. And I think again, it you know we talked about automation on the last slide. I think continued opportunity for automation and automation that you know starts with helping you make sure that hygiene is is you have good hygiene when you're moving into prod, and then that that in prod you have the ability to um, you know, kind of take the actions you need to treat um, what, you know, treat your instances in those environments as, as cattle, not pets, are kind of like these, all of these mindsets are going to just have to be, um, have to be built in in the long term. I, I don't think we see a slowing of the need for app applications, the need for um, for customers to be able to build those very quickly. So we just see an amplification of, of what's what's going on today and, and kind of using technologies that are going to be a little different from, from what we're thought of traditionally. Yeah, I'll actually, you know, uh, you know, certainly echo that, and then also add on that, um, you know, you, I think you'll see a, a maturation. In fact, you really already are of the cloud native tooling that they're offering from a from a security perspective. They, you know, Google, you know, Microsoft Azure, AWS are all making massive advancements in kind of their own native cap capabilities. And I think when you think about the previous slide, one thing we didn't touch on was, you know, this is a partnership. It's a it's a it's a partnership for you know, the vendors and their and their customers, but also the clouds and then vendors like us. And we all want to work together. You know, all of us are interested in holistic security and the, you know, these things are not mutually exclusive. I think you need multiple, multiple tools to work together to define a real holistic view of what your overall security posture is. And I, and I also think that the future looks very much like, you know, IAM is the perimeter. And like, it's all gonna really start there. And that's what you have to be really, really mindful of because, you know, the vulnerabilities and all these things on, on compute instances and, you know, serverless functions like Lambda and containers certainly are problematic, but based on where you can go, if you're a malicious user and you compromise that, you know, you know asset, that's where it becomes a much, much larger, larger problem. So, you know, definitely focusing on, on IAM, both with commercial tooling and vendors, as well as the uh, clouds themselves. 
Awesome. Well, let's switch over a little bit to Q&A. There was a question that came in from Ted Ritter earlier, and I think, Cindy, you sort of touched on it about the same time that he asked it, but, but let me ask it more uh, discreetly, which is, Ted says, so few enterprises are cloud native. Their cloud real reality is best. They've moved their data center into the cloud. More likely, they're running in a hybrid cloud on-prem infrastructure. Please talk about dealing with vulnerability management in a hybrid cloud on-prem world. And I think you touched on this a little bit earlier a few slides ago, Cindy, but maybe just explicitly, you're, you know, Ted's right. Most people are not one or the other. They tend to be a hybrid. Uh, how do you approach vulnerability management when you do have to think about both on-prem and cloud? You know, what are some of the tips and tricks of like how to make sure that's happening in a way that that delivers ease of experience and outcomes across? Yeah. Well, we talked about how you know basically the conceptually and and kind of the controls, the kind of mindset around controls that needs to be in place are consistent, right? So I think it's about ensuring that you're in a position to be evaluating each of those environments to kind of understand the risk that they're presenting and kind of thinking about the, you know, if you have good practice around thinking about attack surfaces, thinking about the risk that are introduced with attack surfaces, you can apply those concepts, you know, that's, that's conceptually applied to both and gives you that construct within which to kind of bring things back and talk about them um, in, in a combined sense. I mean, I have, you know, I have loads of customers that are using um, Divi and they're using VM and they're bringing those two things together to have combined views of, you know, their their risk across the board. And right now, our customers can pull VM data into Divi relative to their their cloud. We can we can visualize cloud uh, capabilities in VM. So customers are looking for ways to have their tools kind of give them um, more of that visibility. And we're certainly at, at Rapid Seven like really understand this challenge um, of having a hybrid world and, and trying to build the, the build the capabilities that help you kind of bridge that and have a consistent way of um, of addressing that problem. Not the how, but what you're addressing. Um, I think there was, there's a, one other, it was more of a statement than a question, but I, I'll read it out. Um, well, actually, no, another question just came in. Uh, Andres Molina asks, um, how traditional vulnerability management programs and security staff can prepare to manage cloud environments, and what are the main challenges? So I guess the question is, you know, in that paradigm shift, um, you know, how does how does that change? Yeah, so uh, definitely curious on you know Cindy's perspective on this too, but I think it's it's that ephemeral nature. You know, these things get spun up and spun down very very quickly, and so. You know, you going back to that real time component, being able to detect that new assets have come online, evaluate them, you know, quickly relative to where they're at within your cloud environment. A lot of vulnerability management tools, they they might have connectors to you know Microsoft or Google or Amazon, but they don't necessarily know what is production versus development versus versus staging. So, you know, if you can bring that context to where this asset lives, that is really important in, in today's cloud world. And then I think, you know, also, you know, being able to detect when these assets go away, you want to be able to clean these assets up quickly so you can make room for the new ones, you know, coming on and ensuring that you're taking that same vulnerability management approach to containers. Also important, you're seeing containers almost get used more so now than yeah. standard, you know, standard compute instances. That is our time for today. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Chris. Thank you to the audience. Thank you to everyone who's participated. Um, uh, coming up next, we have our raffle drawing and closing remarks, so please stay with us. And of course, we have an amazing day three planned for tomorrow.